G'day everybody, Lucas here. Today I'll be going through everything you need to know on exactly how to use the 3D Street Co Vector Mockup Pack. So I put this pack together as a tool to basically help you speed up your design process and make your brand look a bit more polished and just makes it way easier to communicate exactly what you want to your manufacturers. I've put the link to the full pack down in the description below if you wanna check it out. Okay, so we're gonna jump into Illustrator and it's actually what I created the mockups in. So it would be the best app to use for these mockups. But I also include PNGs of each mockup, which is good for Procreate, Photoshop, or anything that can import PNGs. So first you wanna create a new document. Uh, I also have a tab that has a bunch of graphics in it, which I'll be using for the mockups today, as well as the actual mockup pack itself. And these are essentially all the mockups you get within the pack. So let's start with picking out a few. We'll grab this one, for example, and I'll show you how you can drag it over easily and just drop it and it doesn't actually remove it from the original pack so you can always have the template saved. So we'll go through the basic Illustrator tools first. The first and main one will be the selection tool, which you can select with V. This pretty much is going to be your main tool when moving assets around, as well as the direct selection tool up here which you can select with A as well. The direct selection tool gives you the option to move around individual uh, aspects of the mock-up itself. So this is the background. Uh, you can also move the stitching, change it up a bit, change the design of it, uh, literally anything. These first two tools are basically the main tools you'll be using when creating your mock-ups. But an easier way to do this without actually changing through to the other tools is say you're on the selection tool, for example, you can hold control or command on Mac and select what you want to move around. For example, the base layer for each of these or even any seams or stitches. Holding control can pick them out individually without even selecting the direct selection tool. Another useful tool that, or not really tool, but more a shortcut is how to duplicate, which you can do by holding alt, select what you want to duplicate, then simply drag and drop. This will duplicate the entire grouped mockup. If you do want to ungroup this, which can be a lot easier instead of holding control and moving it around, you can select it, right click, and then ungroup. This here will ungroup everything. So you will have full access to moving every single part of this, no matter what it is. But then again, you can also do something else, which is double clicking the grouped item, which now puts you in isolation mode. This pretty much puts you into the group itself. So you can't touch anything else outside of the group, but you can move every individual uh, part of the mock-up, which again, helps a lot, especially if you don't want to ungroup. But this is typically what I do when I'm editing mock-ups myself. Now, one of the more creative tools that you will be using a lot is the pen tool. This here, you can select with P, or you can just select it on the tool panel over here. This here will give you the option to create your own seams or stitching, as you can see. To change over from stitching or just a straight stroke, you can go to the stroke option here, click that, and you can change it from what it would be typically, which is the solid line to a dash line with a three point dash. This here is what I typically use when I'm showcasing stitching. And then I can duplicate, for example, by holding alt. I will then go to the stroke and deselect the dashed lines, which then gives you a new seam but you have so many options that you can work with like literally create whatever you want a new graphic logo to manipulate the garment itself and just change the whole style it's completely up to you it's fully customizable all right now we'll go through how to change the actual garment color itself to do this you'll want to select the base layer itself which you can do by again holding control or command selecting it and then changing the color to whatever you'd like i might go for a bit of a lighter lavender maybe just for an example right you can also if you are wanting to change the color of multiple garments or any other multiple selections that you need to change you can do this by pressing control and shift and select each individual uh, graphic itself then you can double click the color picker and change both of them simultaneously now you know i might actually go with a bit of a blue a darker blue now you can also change the colors of the stitching itself if you had like contrast stitching for example so you want to select the stitching itself so hold control and shift simultaneously and select all the individual stitches. You'll then want to head over to the color picker and change the stroke color instead of the base color like you were doing before. I might go for a bit of a yellow, just for an example here. Bang. Now say you wanted to change the color of just the pocket itself, right? So as you can see here, it is a uncolored pocket. So now what you can do is actually create the panel yourself. What you'd want to do is, is grab the pen tool or select P. You'll then want to remove the stroke as well as the uh, fill color. And then pretty much just go around the entire pocket. Uh, you can do it roughly because it's gonna go behind this stroke here. Do it quite roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now I've created the path around the hoodie pocket itself. You then can change the fill color and changing it to what you want. Let's say, for example, a darker blue than what we actually already have. 
just to add some contrast. But as you can tell, it looks a bit weird being in front of the, the pocket itself, obviously. So say you wanted to move this behind everything. You'd want to right click, then you want to go to arrange and center back. Now it'll go way too far back behind the base layer itself. So then you'd want to go arrange again, bring forward. And now it is behind every element, including that stroke there. And that is how you create a color panel, which you can, again, change to whatever you want. Absolutely anything. I'm just going to keep it the same color as it was before. All right, now we'll get to adding a few graphics to this. Uh, I'm going to pick a few from what I've already picked out. Just some random ones. Uh, I'll probably go with this since it's got yellow itself and maybe that too. Uh, I will then go back to the document I created and paste it into here. So now we've got a few graphics to work with, just random ones. All right, so obviously this is too big now. To resize this, you want to press the selection tool, which is V, make sure you select it on that, and then hold shift and resize to how you'd like it. Bang, just like that. Uh, if you don't hold shift, it will pretty much freeform it. This is a bit of an interesting design where it's it's warped. I've used the warp effect, so it sort of moves weird, but it, as you can see, it's a freeform, but if you hold shift, it keeps it locked in. And now I'm just pretty much going to show you how to make it look like the graphic is wrapped around, like, let's say the arm, for example. So say you wanted, whatever, this star here. doesn't look very good as it is, but just for demonstrational purposes. So now we're going to get onto clipping masks. To do this, with the pen tool selected, you want to make sure there's no fill or, and no stroke. You just want the same path as what we did before for the paneling. You'll then want to go on the edge of where you want to cut it off. So let's say you want to cut this, this part off here. You will go create the path. This can all be tedious, but it's very worth it. You then want to go around your entire mock-up. And as you can see, it will overlap here as well. So in this scenario, you'll also want to line the path up itself just like this and then go all the way around and then connect it. Once you have this path created, you can then select the path itself as well as the graphic you want to mask. Then you select that by holding shift, right click, create clipping mask. And as you can see, it now cuts off just before this stroke. So then it looks like it's a part of the mockup itself. What's cool about clipping masks is say you want to move the graphic itself. Once you do that, it will move the whole clipping mask with it. But again, with isolation mode, you can double click and move the graphic inside of the clipping mask. So wherever you have the clipping mask, as you can see, it'll cut it off right here. But say, yeah, again, it'll cut it off here as well because that's where we ended it, as you can see. Double click out of the isolation and that is essentially clipping masks. Now, let's say if I wanted to duplicate this to the other arm, I would hold Alt and then drag, hold Shift so it stays in the same position. And now it's on the other side, but obviously it's the wrong way. So in this scenario, to flip this, you would want to click, right click, go to transform and reflect. Now, as you can see, because I have it on, well, I guess vertical here, it will completely flip it 180. I think that's 180, right? Then you just want to drag it into position and bang. Now you have it duplicated on each side with a clipping mask. Yeah, this design doesn't look too great, but it's just to show you how it's done. So let's say you wanted to move this graphic behind the hoodie pocket, right? Just for a little bit of an aesthetic look. To do this, because I've actually grouped this graphic with the mock-up itself, we will have to double click it. Once we're in this, this will be isolated as well as everything else. Uh, but because we created the panel before, we can actually drag this down and you're gonna go right click, Arrange, center back. Obviously you won't see it because it's behind the entire thing itself. But if you go right click, arrange, bring forward, it's now behind the uh, the hoodie pocket itself. While also being in front of the base mockup, which is exactly what we're looking for. Again, not the prettiest mockup I've ever made, but it'll do. So another quick tip that uh, I'll give you is just how to change the opacity of things. So in case you wanted to see behind the graphic or if something's matching or not really lining up, it really helps. So you'd want to click the graphic you want. Uh, up here you see opacity you just change it to whatever you'd like. So now I'll demonstrate how to actually customize the garments to literally anything you'd like. So let's say for example, you wanted a cropped button up, right? You'd select the button up itself, drag it into your new document that you've created. Now to crop this, you'll have to select uh, specific parts of the mockup itself. So select the direct selection tool up here or the A key, for example, highlight the part you want to crop just like that. Simply drag up. Now, some things can look a little weird, but it's all about fixing it up so you can get your desired look, which is, in this case, a cropped button up. 
And you can literally do that with any part of any of these mockups. So you can customize it. Say you wanted a bigger sleeve. Bang, customize all these parts, go out a little bit. Very rough example here, but you see what I mean. So bang, a wider sleeve. You literally can customize absolutely anything. Also what comes with the mockup pack itself is some attachments. So say you wanted to add a drawstring to this, just select a random drawstring, paste it. I've just copied and pasted here. Uh, that obviously won't work for the shirt. So we'll go back up to the previous demonstration. Now this is sort of a weird hoodie for drawstrings, but I'm not sure if you saw what I did there, but cause this is grouped and I wanted to separate them a little bit more, I double clicked it, which brought me into isolation mode. I can only uh, work with these. Then I separated it made it look a little bit more proportionate. Double click to get out and align it up. You can then change the color, hold control, select the base color of all of these. Double click the color picker, bang, change it. So we'll go, what? Go for a bit of a darker blue maybe, a little bit of contrast. You know what? I'll even make these tips yellow to match the whole vibe of this blue and yellow that I've decided to go with. And bang, there you go. So that is a, addition that would not be on this it looks it again this looks very odd but it is a good example of how this works and that there is pretty much the entire tutorial now while i didn't get to creating a bunch of mock-ups today these here are a bunch of mock-ups i created in the past uh again all completely customizable moving every single aspect of the mock-up itself as you can see double clicking moving individual parts double clicking again moving even more individual parts, you get the gist. But there are endless possibilities with this. And if you are interested in copying the pack itself, I've put it in the description below as well as all my other assets. If you guys have any questions with anything whatsoever in regards to this pack, or if you just need help, hit me up in the comments below, or you can send through an email at support at 3dstreetco.com and I got you. Peace.